Hello everybody, today we are back in Universe Sandbox doing your guys' suggestions again. It's been a minute and I know you guys have wanted it, so we are back. And we're gonna start by seeing if we can put the moon close enough to Earth that the moon gets ripped apart and turns into rings. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I wanna try this one, I'm excited to try this one. Put a moon half the size of our moon and put it inside the Rosh limit. So let's try it. So let's go to Earth. So there's the moon now orbiting with Earth. Okay, so inside the Rosh limit, it's gonna be pretty close. Okay, I think this is probably in the Rosh limit for sure. So if we put it here and then put half of this mass, I wanna see what'll happen. I feel like we need more intense music for this because like Earth's about to get destroyed. Oh, here we go. Let's see what happens to Earth. We have a, a moon half the size of our moon inside of the Rosh limit. Let's see, here we go. We probably want to slow down time to see this. Okay, there it goes. That should totally start breaking apart. Oh yeah, there we go, see? rips apart and it's almost gonna kind of make rings i think but i don't think universe sandbox is the best at really simulating rings whoa okay i'm actually very impressed i thought it would not perform that well okay so it looks like some of the collisions are causing gases to form i think it's been like 24 hours since it happened let's see if earth can survive so after a long long time they would probably turn into rings in real life but i don't think universe sandbox will simulate that it just kind of has this big gas cloud now around it um, let's give it a long time and just see the very end of this. Okay, so it's been probably a, a, a couple years. I think it starts in like 2014 or something. Let's see Earth. This is what Earth looks like. <laughs> that does not look good. Okay, let's see if Earth survived this. Um, our life likelihood is only at 1.5%, so that definitely killed pretty much everything. I bet some humans would survive because, you know, we're smarter than the animals, but it is dropping still. I wonder if I, if I clear particles. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So actually I did clear the particles and it kind of recovered 83%, but it looks like a lot of things are flooded. Like all of North and South America are completely flooded somehow. Do we count that as surviving? Cause it dropped down to 1% and now it's back up at 80, but look how flooded everything is. It's like the remnants of civilization. We're in the year 2040 now. I think our survived but it's definitely like post-apocalyptic now. Okay, this one's gonna be kind of cool. It is. Make two solar systems collide. So what you can do is place like the sun and then add the planets to the sun like this. So you can see we have all the planets now. So we're gonna try to now launch another sun into the sun. Boom, okay, I tried to aim it so the suns will collide. And then let's add all the planets to this star too. Okay, so now you can see there's two solar systems and I launched this one, so they should collide. Let's see. Oh yeah, here we go, look. They're moving towards each other and you can we can see how the orbits are gonna react to this. Okay, let's see if any planets survive. I wonder if I line them up well enough, because if they collide, they'll definitely supernova. <gasps> okay, they did not collide, but it looks like this one got really hot somehow. Maybe it, they just like skimmed each other and it like took some of the mass, because the mass is slightly higher now. So I think that's what happened. Uh, we're gonna need trails to really see what's going on here. Let's see if any planet survive this. It looks like maybe not. It looks like the two stars are shooting up and down and all the planets are kind of flying out. There's two Earths um, and they're both freezing to death now. So no life would have survived that. So hopefully a solar system doesn't come and try to collide with our solar system. Okay, so yeah, the <laughs> nothing survived. Not a single one stayed in orbit of a star. So it just completely destroyed both of the solar systems. Everything's flying out in all the different directions. It's kind of cool. Interesting. Okay, okay, let's, let's go to the next one. This one, crash 10 Jupiters together and see how the system will react. Let's try it. Um, so now we are trying to collide, it was 10 Jupiters together and see how the solar system reacts. So we're gonna take Jupiter here and just start throwing more Jupiters into it. So this is one Jupiter, so this would be two. I wanna try to make sure Jupiter stays in orbit so I can't launch them all in the same direction. So that's three, four, five. I wonder if it's gonna turn into a star. Six, it's not holding as much mass as I thought. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Big Jupiter. Okay. I think, I, yeah, I gave it too much force in one direction and it's going to fly out of the solar system. You can see that. So I wonder if I throw more in the opposite direction, I can slow it down. So we're gonna launch a couple more. Is that good? No, definitely not. Come on, slow down. Slow down, Jupiter. Why is it going so fast? <laughs> no matter how many I throw, it's still going. Go, 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 go. It's supersonic. It's impossible. 
Make it auto orbit. I mean, yeah. So what's the mass of it now? 13 Jupiters. Okay. So actually, I think if I do this enough, it's going to turn into a star, which I kind of want because I want to see how that's going to do it because it looks like just throwing 10 didn't really do very much. So I want to see if I can turn it into a star if I throw enough. Wait, what just happened? It just got destroyed. What? How did that happen? It literally just disappeared. <laughs> throw a star at it. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to reload the solution and try to throw a star at it. Okay, Jupiter versus, let's throw a small star like Proxima Centauri. Launch, cause look, Proxima Centauri is not that much bigger than Jupiter. I mean, obviously it's still gonna completely absorb it. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> uh, so Proxima Centauri is now in orbit. So we can kind of see what would happen to the solar system if another star was like this. Cause it looks like it's gonna kind of curve in. So it might start pulling on these planets. Oh, you can see it's already disrupting the asteroid belt a lot. Okay, it's getting close to Earth now. This is where it's going to be scary. Um, it definitely looks like it's pulling Earth out of its orbit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, whoa. Okay, so that is going to be very, very bad for Earth. Earth is now in orbit of Proxima Centauri in a very, very elliptical orbit. So it's getting super cold out here and then getting extremely hot when it gets close. Oh, 0.007. There's a very, very small chance of life. It's actually rising, which is kind of funny. Okay, well, it looks like it just ate, <laughs> it ate Earth and it completely destroyed the solar system. Okay, this one I'm excited to try. Hey, Chip, I think if you collided with a nitrogen planet and a planet, so collide a nitrogen planet with a planet, you will get an atmosphere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely remove Earth's atmosphere and then throw a planet that is just made of nitrogen into it and see if that'll bring the atmosphere back and see if we can save life on Earth. So first of all, we have to kill everything. You know, that's just part of the job. That's how we do it around here. Surface, atmosphere, zero. Okay, so you can see all the plants immediately died. There's none left. So let's throw the moon at Earth, but then let's change it to be 100% nitrogen. Okay, I think I did it. Okay, so you can see it actually is bigger than the moon because nitrogen is less dense. Okay, so now we're launching a nitrogen only moon into Earth to see if that will bring back its atmosphere. I don't know if it will. I think it'll do something. Without an atmosphere, I'm pretty sure the life likelihood is zero. Okay, so it's only at 0.1%. So if this helps at all, we're gonna call it a success. Moon into Earth, go. Oh, okay, that was a little quicker than I wanted, but you can see the atmosphere, like the gas is immediately covering the whole surface, making it almost blue. Uh, we're gonna need to give it probably a couple years to fully cool down after that. Yeah, it's still cooling down, so we can't really see what our total life likelihood uh, will be until that's down. It's still cooling down after a lot of years. The problem is the greenhouse effect, because like there's so much gas now, it's completely blue. What's our life likelihood? 0.16, it's about the same as when there was no atmosphere. Uh, I think we just put too much. I'm gonna just turn down the nitrogen till we can start to see the surface. And then I will check it. We can almost see it. I think it's still too hot also. What if I set the temperature to like 15? Okay, now it's our life likelihood. Oh, look, look at that. Oh, it just, it went up to 90 for a second and then dropped back down immediately. So it did help, but we needed less than what I put. Okay, okay, let's try, let's try this one. Make a planet look habitable that isn't habitable. This one should be pretty easy, I think. You just change the colors, right? But let's see, let's see how easy this really is. Um, let's add a new planet to our solar system. Random rocky planet in orbit here. No way we got a habitable planet on spawn. I think we did. 13% already. So you know what we could do? We could make the liquid, it's probably water. So like we replace all the water with like methane because that's not good for life. Yeah, look, that set it to zero. So now that we've switched all of the water to methane, I'm going to set it to a blue color so it looks like water. Okay, now if we just switch the, the base colors and then we set these to like vegetation colors, Okay, that definitely looks like it could be habitable. Like if I just saw this planet, like if I spawned it in and it looked like this, I would think, yeah, there's probably at least a little bit chance of life, but there's actually zero because that is not water. It is liquid methane. Okay, this one's gonna be kind of hard. Make Mars more habitable than Earth. We're gonna try that. Let's see. I think if I use some of the new tools they just added, we should be able to get it. So let's check Earth's life likelihood. So we need to get Mars above 92.1. 
So if we can get Mars above 92% chance of life, Mars will be more habitable than Earth. So I think the best way to do this is going to be just kind of terraforming it using some of these new tools they give us. So we want to set the atmosphere to Earth, uh, pressure and composition, I think. Apply that. Okay, so I think that's good for that. And we're definitely going to need some water. So I think the best way to do it is to actually draw the oceans on because it, it's kind of weird when you add stuff other ways. Okay, put some ocean on here and then settle the liquid. Okay, that looks like a good coverage, I think. How's our life likelihood now? 32. Okay, we're already doing good. I think we're going to need it closer. So I'm going to move it in more to be pretty much the same as where Earth is and then set it to auto orbit. Okay, we are at 40.8. So we need a lot more, uh, maybe a little more water. Prediction? What's the prediction? Can he make Mars more habitable than Earth? This is going to be hard. Okay, we're at 68.4. This is helping a lot. So the goal of the beat is 92%. If I can get Mars's life likelihood above 92, it is technically, according to the game, more habitable than Earth. 72. Okay, so that looks like the right amount of water on the surface. So let me adjust the atmosphere a little bit more to try to get this up higher what did people vote i want to see most people said no you don't believe in me come on guys i'm i am offended <laughs> it's 1 to 18 if he gets it so if i get it then whoever the people that voted yes are going to get a ton of chips okay now i'm going to try my absolute hardest to get this i think i want it a little colder like there i think i'm going to make the mass a little higher okay so the radius is the same as earth okay that lowered the life likelihood but that's expected because we need to set these back to kind of how they were 53 and then we probably want more water now because we made it bigger that made it lower 21 uh oh i think i broke it 32 guys no this isn't working okay melt melt all oh guys i ruined it i ruined it no i dropped it okay 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 i don't know if i can do it <laughs> i think you guys might be right it is going back up but Okay, I guess I'll give up. I guess I guess you guys can win. Where's the prediction? <laughs> 95 said no. You guys are right. All right, all right. There you go. There you go. Have your chips. Okay, we're gonna try this one. Uh, remove Saturn's rings and then make a moon made out of ice and then have the moon get ripped apart by the Roche limit of Saturn to see if it makes rings. So we're basically trying to recreate Saturn's rings manually. Okay, here's Saturn. Um, it already doesn't have its rings because it uses a lot of RAM, like computing power to calculate them. So it defaults them off, but I'm not gonna turn them on. What I'm gonna do is take a ice moon and put it, that's well within the Roche limit. And then we're going to make it completely made out of ice. So we want our composition. Okay, so now it is a completely ice moon. Let's uh, let's put on time and see if this turns into rings. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, give it some time to go that should totally start ripping apart no way it doesn't what how does that not rip apart that's definitely within the rush limit it should be does it need more mass give it more mass there we go oh <laughs> okay well you guys you can see the fragment starting to ring around it i've tried this before and i know universe sandbox does not like to give objects rings like it'll just kind of make these gas things spin around but i think that's kind of the best we can do so we're gonna call that a success because I've tried before, and that's really what you can get. But thank you for coming to the Universe Sandbox section of the stream. We're gonna go to Kerbal Space Program now. I really wanna try to land on Min Miss today. Then we go Tools, Explode, and you just click on it. Yes!